ήταν η μέρα Κυριακή, μια ηλόρωστη μέρα, 3 Οκτωβρίου 1943. I never really can imagine that I heard anything about uh, Germans in Greece. On the German side during the war, the war mm -hmm. I haven't really met anyone. Now, individually, how do you feel about this war? His opinion is that war crimes uh, just uh, can't be uh, disregarded. I felt like a heartbroken. Um, watching the film, um, like I think I was crying. So we were disappointed that there wasn't much being done to remember um, the tragedies that happened in Greece. Why? And I was like two kilometers far from his place. Especially German ignorance, so especially the soldiers coming back from the war, celebrating a regiment. I mean, how can, how can, how can you live with us? Did you ever feel hatred? Or I feel sad about the humanity. Do we all have that animalistic and cruel side inside of us and with the right circumstances it can come it can come out? Love is the is the best medicine. So what can I say? What happened really happened? Zagora in Bulgaria, there is Zagori in Serbia, in Albania. Zagor, Zagor means a land beyond the mountains. Therefore, we called uh, uh, our initiative, which is uh, a non for profit uh, organization, the land beyond. And to feel beyond, the three key words are liberty, sharing, and one world. I'm part of the sixth generation here, and we're happy overall to host uh, uh, such kind of activities, which give the uh, opportunity to people from different uh, cultural, linguistic, religious, political, uh, and geographical uh, uh, milieu uh, to be together, to, to feel uh, uh, well together, to have a nice time, to promote uh, liberty, to promote sharing, to promote uh, one world. I'm Ana Maria, Vicky, Maria, Stephanie, Marvin, Geografia, Andrea, Solga, Iman, Julia, Nina, Toby, Yanis, Julia, Nikos, Yanis, Elizabeth, Mar Margarita, Andreas, Nikos, eh, Nicholas, Nicholas, Melin, Johan, Annalisa, Sena, Max, Leon. Leon. Max, uh, Anna Maria, Leon, Haris, Uli, Dimitris. we breathe and then we turn yeah. now how are you <laughs> How was the first night? <laughs> the, the, this three dogs. <laughs> the this do this ones? Yeah, yeah. In the night they were bigger. And... You had the shadows on the those... side of your tent as they walked by, and you were like, "Who?" <laughs> Have mercy on them. They just make friends with them. <laughs> <laughs> but so the, the, the program has also a focus on on history. Uh, so it's on uh, on the tracks of common history, common history, German Greek history. And uh, today you saw the program. We will stay here. In the afternoon we will have a walk, and a walk and talk. Carlos Orisate. Simena firtachnume gliku tuku dal yu gerasi. Dafur pro prochen 
ואין כי לא צוקק, אין כי זה קירסן, ואין זה טראונן סלם. חייצליך ולפונן. Was möchten Sie essen? Ich äh, möchte eine Hamburger. Ich möchte äh, einen Salat. Und ich möchte ein Wurst. Ich habe eine Wurst. Was? Ich mit dem Mastora. Was hast du gemacht? Ich <lacht> Hey, hallo. Hallo, wie geht's? Äh, sehr gut. Äh. <lacht> du bist, äh, du bist gut. Wie geht's? Du? Äh, ich hab... You ask... Uh, <lacht> you ask something else? From here it starts the famous uh, Galderimi. This is called Galderimi. Mule path in English. Or cobblestone. Mule path. And as you... probably know, or you don't, uh, there are 46 villages in Zagori, one of them is Vitsa, and all villages were linked uh, with uh, such uh, cobblestones, mule paths. So this is a beautiful path in the forest, from uh, the land beyond to the land beyond, because for me land beyond is, uh, is a vision about the whole Zagori, a land beyond the uh, big cities, pollution, climate change. Today, Epirus has only uh, around uh, something like uh, more than 300,000 uh, inhabitants. It's, uh, it's very few. And uh, a part of the city of Ioannina, all other uh, cities of Epirus today, there are uh, 19 uh, municipalities, are on decline. We will go to the village of Asprangeli, victim village. I don't know if you know what it means. Mm, the Greeks, I guess, that we know. Yeah. But the Germans, victim village, Opferdorf, mm. villages destroyed by the occupiers of the world. So Asprangeli is a village uh, 10 minutes from here by the bus. The bus will come and take us. I'm the, um, cultural association of uh, um, Asprangeli and Elati, Elati is the next door, the, the next uh, village. They joined uh, together to get us uh, to, to, um, to organize a talk. Είμαι ο Χρήστο Ζαπακόλα και η Ελένη Στεριοπούλου. Εκπροσωπούμε δύο συλλόγου, τον Πολιστικό Σύλλογο Ασπραγγέλων και τον Πολιστικό Σύλλογο τη Ελάτη, που είναι το χωριό που θα πάμε μετά. Hello, Christos Alabokas, Vorsitzender des Vereins von Asprangeli und Eleni Steriopoulou, Vorsitzender des Kulturvereins von Elati. Nächste Dorf. Die willkommen uns herzlich in ihrem Dorf. Und er erzählte, dass die beiden Dörfer, Elati und Asprangeli, wurden von der Edelweißdivision Der, der Nazis äh, zerstört. Die erste Mount Division Edelweiss, in Germany die einzige Bergsdivision Edelweiss, war eine der größten kriminellen militärischen Formationen der Nazi Germany during the Second World War. In 2008 the German historical researcher Hermann Frank Mayer reports for the first Mount Division Edelweiss during of this campaign, said Hermann Frank Mayer. In the Soviet Union, 1941, they were used to killing. They did this every day for a year and a half. I estimate that uh, they had killed about 60,000 people, and when they were transferred first to Montenegro, Serbia, and then to Greece here in the region of Epirus, they had become such brutal officers and soldiers that they had no problem committing these bloody acts. Is Alekos Raptis, he is a historical researcher, a history researcher, 
Äh, er bedankt sich sehr bei Becky nach vorne und bei Respekt vor Gries äh, und mich persönlich, äh, dass äh, wir seine äh, Forschungen und seine Arbeit äh, geschätzt haben und sie heute hier in unser Programm integriert. The German Gebirgsjäger Commandos offiziell weiß, hat Bert down everything, throwing, throwing, incendiary, Pounder into the houses here in this village of Ospregeli. Of the famous 135 castle houses in this village of Ospregeli, they burned 118. They burned the church and the monastery, the school. A few days later, the inhabitants of Villa Sespragli abandoned the caves and forests they had taken refuge and they returned to the village. They went into the backyards on their burnt houses at Barnes and Trey, in spite of the, of the wild times of the Nazi brutality, to rebuild their villages, their lives. Am selben Tag wie das Brangeli wurde auch Herr Lat in Brand gesetzt und zerstört. Und äh, ihr Anliegen ist Fotos von dem Leben, von dem Alltagsleben vor dem Brand. Du bringst die Katastrophe. Vor dem, vor dem Brand. Das ist die andere Seite. Dieses Haus wurde nicht, wurde nicht niedergebrannt. Und wurde aber äh, restauriert, genau in der traditionellen Art. Also das Foto ist von vorher. Und jetzt werden wir das sehen, dass es genauso wieder restauriert wurde und ist jetzt eine Beherberge. Hier sieht man ein, äh, die, 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 die Hauptkirche in, auf dem Hauptplatz äh, des Dorfes. Ah, hier sind die Schüler von den, und Schülerinnen von beiden äh, Dörfern. Auf einem äh, Ausflug. Drei Viertel des Dorfes wurden zerstört von den 110 Häusern, sind die 23 übrig geblieben. Hier auf dem Foto kann man sehen, also von diesem Punkt aus, von, von, von hier drüben ins Dorf, das, wie, wie das Dorf ausgesehen hat, bevor es äh, verbrannt wurde. Das Wichtige ist, dass die Division hier an, äh, angekommen ist und äh, bis hier eigentlich alles zerstört hat, bis auf das Krankenhaus, was wir vorher erwähnt haben. Aber auch hier stand ein äh, Gebäude, ein Haus und hier auch noch ein Haus. Das wurde alles zerstört. Aber bis, nur bis hier, bis zum Platz. Alles andere wurde, also das hier, die Häuser, die weiter hinten standen, äh, wurden nicht zerstört. Und die ähm, Einwohner des Dorfes, wie sie gesehen haben, dass die Division hier ins äh, Dorf kommt, haben sie alles mitgenommen, was sie eben einfach noch schnell ähm, äh, zusammenpacken konnten. In the program uh, set a symbolic memory activity. Opening paths of peace. Yeah, Our uh, contribution very small, it is a symbolic. Uh, act so that we help with the, the help of the cultural uh, associations. We have only to take the, the, the grass and cut some uh, trees and so, so that uh, this path, the uh, specific uh, path of Sprangeli, uh, gets more access. The, the idea is, uh, my dream, let's say, <laughs> but it will never be happen, but to, uh, to, to, to have a network of such uh, paths of peace through whole Greece um, where the visitors walk from one uh, uh, historic site to another and so uh, help this, this uh, mostly very abandoned and uh, uh, regions to to take off so to learn from the history to learn not only to to, to look at the, at the the region the problems and the people to come together but also to help like this by attracting people from everywhere to help these villages somehow to develop
Asta au fost și noi. Bine, bine. Iten, imera chilieti, ne-ai lorus timera, 3 octombrie, chilie ne-a coșa și aranda 3. Nu, 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 germanii! Ia să fii germanii! Μύρζε, όλο το χωριό γύρω γύρω. Μια κνίσα που έβγαζε ζαντάρα. Welcome here in Ligiades. I hope you like the village. It's like a balcony watching Ioannina. I would like to thank Frisanthos Kostantinidis for this marvelous picture. Marvelous, you know, in the meaning of it's well done. Uh, it's called uh, the balcony memories of the, the occupation during the Second World War. Όπου σε αυτό είχαν βάλει ας πούμε γύρω στα 20 άτομα μέσα. Christopher's parents, his mother is, uh, is born here. He was born in Athens. Αυτό, αυτό το φτιάχνω το φτιάξω παππούς μου. Ναι. Εδώ. Ναι. One uh, uncle. Okay. Uh, 13 years old. Uh, 13. 13. One, three. Yeah. <laughs> And... Uh, Second grandfather, second grandmother, and two uncle, second. The, the, eh? dogs, the dogs, big dogs. monument or memorial uh, for this massacre is here. Our group, which was be the first to enter this <laughs> building, which was restored with many, many uh, efforts. efforts by Chrysanthos, the whole group, uh, Panos, uh, Alekos, and the uh, people who were interested in this, while the official state and the, and the, and the municipality weren't not, not so uh, eager to, to make it. So they have uh, applied for, for fundings and so on. German fundings, respect for Greece, Zukum's uh, fund. Uh, gave uh, money to restore it. I'd like to thank these lovely people that uh, accompanied here, and it, it's, they are along here with us. Uh, Mrs. Olga Drosu from Respect for Greece, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, most of what you see around is from them. Not to tell everything. And uh, Mrs. Valpul Panagiota from Epekina Hora. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Thank you so much for being here. Learn about the history. We must remember what has happened and hope that this will never be repeated ever forever. Ευχαριστώ το respect for Greece και την κυρία Όλγα που έκανε όλο το συντονισμό. I have to say, we come in a sunny dog and I hope that we have a schöner Eintrag auf dem Dorf haben wird und dass sie das auch weitergeben wird an die anderen, an Freunde, an Familie die vielleicht dann in nächster Phase auch mal dieses Hotdorf verbinden würden. Und er bedankt sich sehr herzlich bei Respekt für Griechenland, äh, weil, wie schon die Dame vorher erzählt hat, dass vieles hier in dem, äh, in dem Kulturzentrum äh, von Respekt für Griechenland gefördert wurde, gesponsert wurde. Meine Mutter ist hier äh, geboren und hat hier gelebt. Ähm, also das heißt, mein Origin hier ist eigentlich von diesem Dorf und schon von sehr klein auf habe ich dieses Dorf sehr oft in den Ferien äh, besucht. The whole process of uh, editing uh, the film took uh, one year and uh, for him it was a process um, of um, getting into and be close to the pain um, of uh, the events but on the other hand as well um, to have the feeling of this catharsis, uh, this uh, feeling of uh, 
um, kind of um, taking a breath after, you know, of a very, very tragic uh, event. You just can breathe again. Σε πέρασε το κεφάλι και έφυγε. Και πέρασε η ίδια σφαίρα από εδώ και έφυγε από εδώ και έμεινε το σώμα μόνο το σώμα ζωή. Έχει προσπαθήσει στο σύνολο να έχει προσπαθήσει κάθε φαμιλία της πόλης. Έχει προσπαθήσει να προσπαθήσει κάθε φαμιλία της πόλης σε αυτό το σύνολο. And um, uh, he said in the beginning, of course, they were kind of uh, reluctant uh, when he came here, started filming. Um, but then uh, they were very open and they uh, invited him uh, to his house. And the other thing that he mentioned was that his uh, colleagues, because since the process was very difficult for him uh, especially, um, uh, his colleagues were very supportive all the time of uh, the editing uh, of the movie. Αναστασία Φούκα. Ναι. Τότε πόσο χρονών. 14. 14. Από πού να αρχίσω, τι να σας πω πρώτα πρώτα. Σαν να είναι στο διπλωνό δωμάτιο και να την έχω. Ήσυχώς. Και μας ξεκίνησε ο Ζωρός να πρόβατα. Και μας διαμέρωσε στα σπίτια. Ακούω μάνα από τη σκότωνα. Ωι, 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 ωι. Ήταν ο Χριστόδωνος ο Μακαρέτης, ο πατέρας του Λουτσιοπέτρα. Ακούγανε η φωνή του. Εγώ είχα τον αδερφό μου. Δεν είχα μόνο τον Μιχαήλ και παραμάσκα του Χωτή Κεφάλι. Και κρατούσε τον αδερφό τη αγκαλιά και τον σκότωσαν μπροστά στα μάτια τη. Ε, την άχτηκαν τα μυαλά του στην κυριολεξία στον αέρα και θυμάμαι να λέει ότι γέμισε ο τόπο μυαλά από τον αδερφό τη. Ωε, μανούλα, μη σκιάζουμε. Ωε, μανούλα, μη σκιάζουμε το παιδί. Ωε, δεν το κρατήσω εγώ άνοιξα το χέρι έτσι και, και έπεσε το παιδί τα, τα νάσκρα και εγώ τα πίπκα και έβαλα φωτιά. In the village there were 91 people uh, during the massacre and six people um, survived the massacre but one uh, person uh, died, one uh, child died afterwards by a bomb so it's actually we have the final number of five survivors. Αυτό είναι το σπίτι που με βρήκαν εδώ πέρα που βίζανε στη μητέρα μου και ήμουν μαχαιρωμένος και με είχε η μητέρα μου στην αγκαλιά. Ήταν σκοτωμένη η μητέρα μου, εγώ είχα ανοίξει το στήθος της μητέρας και ήμουν σκοτωμένο γάλα. Ο αδερφός μου ήταν, ήταν σκοτωμένος εδώ μαζί με τη μητέρα μου. Με, πήρε, με πήραν εδώ οι χωριανοί και με πήγαν στη Γρυβινίτ. Εκεί έκασα περίπου δύο χρόνια και έγινα καλά. Ήρθε να δείτε και τη μαχαιριά μου. Λέγομαι Κρίστοφ Σμίνκος Τάβους. Είμαι Γερμανός. Πρώτο ήρθα εδώ στην Ήπειρο το 78. Σε τον δεν μπορούσα να το πιστέψω αυτά που άκουσα από τους γέροντες. Δεν ξέραμε τίποτα για αυτά τα θέματα, κατοχή στα Βαλκάνια, στην Ελλάδα κλπ. Και σκέφτηκα, αφού είμαι ιστορικός, πρέπει να το μελετήσουμε καλύτερα. So he decided in 1987 to come here and make a research. But uh, if, he, if he went as a German, especially, to make a research here, he had to know someone local, and he found my father. So anyway, and they came together. The problem is that, first of all, no one wanted to, uh, to help him in uh, the research. Well, or because uh, people, they say, okay, it's an old story. Why we have to talk about it? And second, because he was German. Uh, they didn't want, the, especially the victims in uh, places that there were uh, martyric uh, villages or something like this, didn't want to talk to him. His father, his, uh, this is Panos, he's actually the editor of, uh, the, uh, of the publisher of the book that was uh, brought out by Mr. Gustavus. Uh, 
he was a doctor. So, and the doctors at that time were traveling from one village to the other because there was no doctor only in each village. They had one doctor for the whole region. So he was traveling from a region. He went into the houses. He was, you know, he was kind of a confidant uh, for all these people. So for that why it was easier for the German, uh, with Mr. Gustavus, to have, to, have the, to have the possibility to go into the houses and to be able to talk to the, to the people. He was accepted. Yeah, he was accepted by, with the support of, uh, um, with the support of, uh, of his uh, father. So my father told him that uh, first you will learn a little bit better Greek. He knew ancient Greek. You will not say uh, from the beginning that uh, you are German. You will say something else and something like this. And after that, you must start uh, triggering Tsipuro. <laughs> 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 and the problem is that when he finished this research, it was uh, 1,000 pages. And uh, he couldn't find a publisher, not even in Germany and not, not even in Greece. And that's why I told him I will become a publisher to have this book in 2002. It was finally ready. And after that, we met and Chris and also and, uh, so on. Mit Scham und Schmerz bitte ich im Namen Deutschlands die Familien der Ermordeten um Verzeihung. Well, the question was uh, how the uh, how the victims feel about uh, the film. It was a very emotional, of course, the, the first time, the first screening of the movie in uh, Janena, in the cultural uh, center. And uh, the whole village uh, came to watch the movie. And of course, uh, it was a lot of uh, crying, hugging, and uh, supporting uh, each other. And uh, But his uh, personal uh, opinion is, um, uh, we should not talk about uh, justification, because justification involves also an, a political um, um, aspect uh, of, uh, the, of the events. And uh, here we talk again about the reparations, uh, the money that should be given to the villages which were burned down and so on. This was something when we talked, but you remember yesterday also in Nasprangli. Uh, and, and, and yeah, and regarding the, the, the crimes, uh, uh, you know, the, the war crimes, uh, for his, um, uh, his opinion is that war crimes uh, just uh, can't be uh, disregarded. Uh, they will exist uh, forever. Dear Mr. Mayor, dear Mr. Lissaf, I wanted to thank you very much on behalf of the whole group. We are a group of about 30 young and some older people from Germany and from Greece who met in Vitsa. We want to explore and hide the history of the beautiful region of Epirus. We are especially interested in learning more about the period of the Second World War the dark period of the German occupation, the crimes committed to the civil society, the, the, the deportation and examination of the Jews from Ioannina. But we believe that future tasks go hand in hand with the responsibility that grows out of the past. That is the scope of this meeting, to bring young people who themselves are not to blame for the crimes and wrong decisions of their ancestors together to discuss the question of what responsibility they have as the younger generation today for positive development in our countries and between our countries. As far as we know, you do not belong to any political party. This is very unusual for Greeks. I'm particularly glad because for your visit here in our Holy Synagogue, especially since the audience are young people from Germany. This is the Holy Synagogue of Ioannina, the only synagogue of the city. 
This building is two, uh, two, uh, 200 years old building. It is a typical Romanian synagogue since our community is, was, is, was the capital of the so-called Romanian Judah, Judaism. This community has a history of at least 1,000 years. It's an old community. Now we are in the Jewish quarter. It is in the castle there was the Jewish, the Christian and the Muslim quarter. It is a Byzantium uh, Ottoman city. As you got in on your left side, it was a Kafasoto Parathero wooden made uh, window. This is the window that the women were coming inside and they could see the men sitting in the synagogue, but men could not see the women. Also, it was, for, it was forbidden if the woman was a sex worker or a, or a divorced woman. She could not enter in the, uh, in the synagogue. The rich Muslim and the rich Christian. Uh, they started living in the castle in 1611. Till then, the castle, it was only for Christians. But in 1611, it was a big rebellion that uh, against the Turkish ruler, that uh, finally it was, uh, they lost. And uh, the Turkish came inside the castle and uh, also in the Jewish, only rich and Christian could live inside the castle. The first uh, uh, reference about synagogue, it was in 1879. The first entrance of the synagogue was here. It was the Ach in It was the entrance of the first synagogue here. It is called Minyan. It was still 10 persons. So we know it was a small community. After that was closed, they made the wall. And the synagogue in front, it was after uh, 1611. Now we will see a typical house, how it was built after 1869. Uh, all there are stone made, so they could not be burned. And all the, uh, only the upper place, it was wooden made or stone made if they had money. Here it was the yard that the Jewish community were waiting to talk to the rabbi. This was the house of the rabbi. Here it was like uh, thieves, uh, non-working people, uh, unemployment and something like this, that they were coming here. We say the rich was here and the extremely poor was here. It was also in the night sex workers, it was uh, postland dealers and something like this. And of course this door was closing and the rich people who were getting out and could find unemployment people to, for jobs and something like this. Inside the castle, the rich people, and now we are getting to the uh, new, uh, new rich people and to the extremely poor people. The Jewish community of Yanana, uh, as the stereotypes say that they were rich and something like this, only 10% had money to eat. All the other had to go to common uh, city, common uh, food uh, giving. They were extremely, extremely poor. Only 10% of the community had money. So there is another one myth that it was uh, like uh, a rich community, the Jewish are rich and something like this. I think that Ioanna is the only Romanian Jewish community around the world today. In March 25, 1944, the Jewish community of Ioannina was arrested and sent her directly into the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. The old elder's house, it was taken by the German police and it was the place that they had the Jewish people to register that they are from Yana. Of course, they didn't know what they would happen, but the, uh, the pogrom, the Holocaust, was organized in this house. Uh, only 100 survived in the out of 1,850 people. And the other 60 people went to the mountains with the resistance groups or followed an escape network from Ioanna, Athens, area, Izmir and Palestine. This 
the net world followed my parents and survived. After the Second World War, there was the Jewish 1945, 1946, the Jewish community of Ioannina was re-established with 160 members on the out of 2000. Here, it was the building of Alliance Francaise and the new synagogue. It was this building, it was the Jewish building for the survivors that was built uh, by the American joint, the uh, Jewish uh, organization. It was a very difficult situation, especially for the surviving Jewish uh, population. So many of them left the city either to Athens, in, in Athens, one of the two synagogues is the Yadana Synagogue. It's the official synagogue of Athens. The second one is the Yadana Synagogue for those people who immigrated from Ioannina to Athens, especially after the war. Or they went to Israel, to the new state of Israel, or to the United States. Thus, the number of the members of the community progressively declined, and now the community is a tiny community, a very small community with less than 50 members. And in the marble inscriptions, you have seen all the names of the 1,850 members of the community who died in the concentration camps. And you can see the names of uh, my family from both mother and father. <coughs> I had the honor and privilege to be the president of this uh, Jewish community for approximately more than 20 years. I was an active citizen, uh, so I was deeply involved in uh, city affairs. I was a member of the city council for uh, many years. I was uh, also president of the cultural center of the municipality of Ioannina, 2011-2014. Then, three years ago, four years ago, I decided to be the mayor of the city. It was a big and difficult decision. Since, as uh, you hear previously, I'm the first ever elected Jewish mayor in Greece, and possibly not only in Greece, and uh, I'm the first and the last, I'm sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's, it, it, it's, it's, I think it's impossible. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot sign this. You know that in uh, Greece there is a growing anti-Semitism, but fortunately, I should tell the truth, it is a verbal stereotype of the Semitism. It means that it is a Semitism that uh, uh, believes in stereotypes and uh, hate speech, but it's not violent. So, no one is afraid of being Jewish here. First of all, in my city, but also in the country. So, I elected as a mayor of the city, despite my religious... Uh, uh, my religion. Because I have worked hard in this city. I was, I told you that I was professor of drama medicine for 20 years. So I have uh, hospitalized at least half of the population <laughs> during my career. My career as a doctor is about 40 years. And I have uh, worked, I think successfully, but it's not, uh, I had very good reputation in the society as a doctor, as a teacher. Then. I was deeply involved in the city politics. I was not elected suddenly as uh, I hear yeah, Moses will be elected. I had a, a, a 20 years participation in the local society as a member of city council, as a member of other societies. Uh, so uh, I was very well known in the society. People knew me and believed me and believed that I can succeed uh, in, uh, as a mayor of the city.
I am not a religious person. It's I have to separate religion from tradition. It's two different things. I'm Jew. I'm proud of being Jewish, but I'm not religious at all. Is that um, common among the community, like not being religious at all, but following yeah. the tradition? I'm a secular leader of the community. I'm not religious at all. Also, Just the like other you. people of the community are secular. It's not a religious community at the moment. And I told you there are 50 people, and most of them are intermarriages. You understand that you cannot be a strict religious man. Uh, you are married with a Christian wife. It's impossible. It's so. It is a secular community. Many religious Jews, and yes. as far as I know, they um, spend a lot of time um, with studying to, uh, to the. Study the Bible. Exactly. The Bible. So no, no, I don't. I uh, read about Jewish tradition about uh, Jewish civilization, but not religious books. I'm not Zionist. I don't be second. <laughs> I'm in Greek, 100% Greek city, well incorporated in the Greek society. I'm proud of being both Jewish and Greek. Many of, of young people during the 50s went to the Israel and came to the We stay here. We started here, we worked here. We love our country, we believe in our country, the opinions of our country. I want to think something and express an emotion. I will put more. Okay. Just an emotion from yesterday. If you see something like, um, a, like a statement, this is not the feeling. Just go a step deeper and see what's beside, behind that. I just wrote admiration because I am really proud of people who can relieve their feelings and express them. So I just felt, apart from sadness and stuff, I felt that, like I was really proud and admired them. Whenever I see it, I have to cry. I felt like heartbroken uh, watching the film. Um, like, I think I was crying. I felt sadness because uh, the survivors were not the only ones that were affected, but the future generations also. If you remember a granddaughter of a survivor, she couldn't really speak to us. She was crying uh, because uh, the feelings that were passed down to her from uh, her father, mother, and uh, her, uh, her ancestors uh, that had really affected her. And uh, I think uh, this uh, tragedy affected all the future generations. The way they, they, they treat the people and, and they celebrate this, I fell in an amazing rage, you know. Rage. It's, this is not sadness. Uh, but, but underneath, rage is always sadness. Yeah, I also felt rage about it, but also hope because young Germans actually uh, protested against it. I wrote down disappointment. I was looking back and I had the feeling you were crying too, like me. Uh, yeah, um, I was trying to focus more on learning during the movie than like focusing much on my emotions. But towards the end, um, I really empathized with um, one of the survivors going to Mittenweide and seeing the people celebrate and walk towards the monument in positive remembrance of the Edelweiss Brigade. I can just imagine um, how numb and how sad and disappointed he must have felt going there. Why? And I was like two kilometers far from his place. My grandfather's 
witnessed the whole thing. That was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. And I also want to point out that the ignorance is not about... I wasn't speaking of the Germans. It's not that I was talking about their ignorance. What hurts me the most is our ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's true. Nobody... We also don't know about this. Like, I heard somebody say, like, oh, in Greece, you know of these things, but in Germany, we don't. We don't know either. Yes. <laughs> we know maybe of our ignorance. Yeah. 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 But I think it should be us who should know, so I, I absolutely agree, but ignorance, but especially German ignorance, so especially the soldiers coming back from the war, celebrating a regiment, I mean, how can, how can, how can you live with us? I wrote anger because of, you know, the unfairness of it all and the needless deaths and also because of this, that they were celebrated back home and they didn't accept the victims when they visited, they told them nothing happened. Like, for me, it was like they killed their families twice. Like, these people come to your village and you treat them like this. You kill the people? You hurt the, the whole community, their descendants, for generations to come, they're traumatized. And then you cover it up, you never speak about it again, and you erase their identity and their, their memory, basically. So it's, it's a proper genocide. And they were just civilians. It wasn't part of the war, it wasn't the fight. They just attacked. What happened happened. I mean, we have approached the subject from every direction, getting to know things. Everyone's uh, uh, feelings are ignorant, sadness, angry, uh, and stuff like that. But I think that the highest level of feeling should be love, because after all, we're all humans. I mean, yeah, uh, justice uh, should be, you know, uh, something that will be felt from the people that have lost uh, members of their families and uh, actually the survivors that are still living and don't feel the, um, that they're justified for what happened. It's 80 years now. I'm not going to hit German people of what happened 80 years ago. This is where we should be united as people, because after all, we are all people, people, not German, not Greek, not Italians, not anything. We're people, just people. Because he said uh, she's ashamed for the humanity <laughs> and how people can do things like this. So that was the best opinion that I heard today. This is Mahatma Gandhi, and uh, <laughs> this is the Mahatma Gandhi of Greece. So that's why I really felt so overwhelmed by his um, his ideas. Any thoughts? Maybe from Ioan in uh, the synagogue. Yes. Yes, I really enjoyed um, our visit in the synagogue because, first of all, I've never been in a synagogue before. And at the same time, it was a nice way to end the day after watching the film. Uh, I think we had a great conversation with the mayor mm -hmm. and a very interesting one. And I especially enjoyed that people felt really comfortable to ask him questions. And he also was very confident and honest about uh, uh, with his answers. Leader of the Jewish community and was just <coughs> so confident in saying, but I'm not religious, and for me it was a little bit. Um, uh, I'm missing the word. Widersprüchlich. Contradictory. Contradictory. Um, because, as far as I knew before, only the um, religious leader is allowed to open the roles and so on. And he did that, but also said that he isn't religious at all, and I think that was really interesting. I felt uh, very, very close to the whole group. Uh, of us and um, I felt also this was really a group. We were here only three days but um, uh, with all the things that we are um, living through and this, uh, all the things that we discuss um, we have become really very much uh, one and uh, this is very beautiful. Do you ever feel like you are, you are guilty or something or you, you, you want to heal from those things? How do you um, feel? I actually think um, I don't really feel a burden because I, I, um, I mean, I, I never, I, I can't know really for sure um, with like if, if my if my um, ancestors did uh, part it in the atrocities, but from what I know from my family side, because they were also Christian, they they were trying to stay out of it. I think, for example, like my father's side, they they kind of. Uh, 
suffered i think in a way mm-hmm. and i also probably I, i do think that many of the brothers of my grandfather were probably killed in mm-hmm. some way um i um i mean i i like not not just because of my family history i don't, I don't think i feel responsible f- for this generally but i mean it was like like this this whole huge violence uh and, and this whole madness uh kind of um started from yeah kind of like uh, the, the the people i share a, i share a nation and a common uh, history with so I, i do feel a responsibility coming to that that this uh, that i mean because like me as a german citizens i do in in a small small part have an influence on on how the history can go as a small part and in that sense i i feel a responsibility you shouldn't have feel guilty mm. but i because that's what we were talking uh, mm. with Nina earlier that I'm trying to figure out if uh, all uh, how hu- the humanity goes to that place it's mm. not about Germans or Greek but mm. what makes people do we have all do we all have that animalistic and cruel side inside of us and with the right circumstances it can come ca- ca- it can come out so that Eh? It's a big question, yes. <laughs> and I can't like answer it. <laughs> I don't know. I hope not, but <laughs> but that's my thoughts from yesterday. Uh, I think that it's not the German people. I think with the right uh, situation, every nation can go to that point. I come from a village near Kozani, which is really similar to Vitsa, uh, the structure. So you get an idea of the village, and. Um, It was a pass for the Greek army to go to the Albanian borders to fight with the Italians because uh, the the Greek-Italian war happened during the winter. My grandma would be like uh, the statue we saw when we were coming about the woman of Pindos. She would um, carry the big box with uh, socks. She would. Uh, knit the socks, uh, uh, food, um, water. water and everything necessary and she would walk like in two meters snow uh, for hours and hours and they would hide under rocks to avoid the um, speed fires and the, um, the bombs. Uh, so that's, uh, I have heard many stories about uh, this this kind of situation but she never talked about her feelings about that did you ever feel hatred or something good when you were in school because we did the ceremonies every anniversary yes. how did you feel about the war in general <laughs> i'm feeling sad that's what i was saying uh, before I feel sad about the humanity, that uh, why we have to do things like this. Uh, I think that we we must be love each other and be peaceful all together. I don't see nations or colors or I don't know. I think that we are the same. I was grown up in Haidari, which is a municipality that is like nine kilometers in the west side of Athens. And there is a story behind Haidari that actually is not talked a lot. And I had to learn about it since I grew up there. And I mean, it's not even written in the history books. Sometimes you just have to do the research to learn about stuff like this. So I was kind of interesting because, interested, sorry, because um, I live in a street which is called um, Napoleon Sukadzidis. This guy was one of the 200 people, uh, they were communists and they were political prisoners in Haidari. And because as a reprisal for the Greek army killing a um, German, I think he was in the SD, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they were executed like 200 people in Kesariani place. This happened in the 1st May of 1944. 
And so every year in this Memorial Day, we're doing something like a collective thing from the university organization I am in. And so we are getting there. We shout out each one of the name of the 200 that died and we shout, I am present. And this is... Yeah. <laughs> It's powerful. So yes. it is the name, the age, and then we also shout present. And it is really powerful, yeah. So oh, I, get the, I get the chills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about this guy, Napoleon Sukadzidis, is that he wasn't about to get executed, but he actually offered being killed um, in the in the side of another guy that was disabled and he really? like yeah. I'm going to go for your place. <laughs> so yes, um, I mean, even though I don't have like personal memories from this, I still feel it because it's the place I am grown up. So yeah, the thing is that I want to add that if you actually don't do the research on your own, you're not going to learn this personal memories. And this is why I'm glad that people like documentary filmers or writers or historical researchers do. On the German side during the war, the war mm -hmm. I haven't really met anyone mm -hmm. that his grandparents are. And I find it really interesting because I was also always wondering, like, I've never had someone to admit that he had a connection. And the way he talk about it, it's really liberating. Or, yeah. I don't know. I just wanted to share that. It's, so it's impressive for me, yeah. the way you deal with all of those things. And I can't imagine if I was in your position, I think I would be depressed for years. We cannot change what has happened, but we can try to make, make it better. Um, and we can also try to not undo what has happened, but um, make up for it, uh, we, for example. Uh, by paying reparations or by doing what we are doing now, um, engaging in reconciliation and memorialization and so on. Um, I think uh, for the Greeks of the group, uh, it was the first time meeting people that, uh, German people that had family that was involved, uh, their ancestor was, uh, were involved uh, in the German army in a way, and it was really interesting to meet someone, but uh, and uh, we asked them a lot about how did if they ever feel guilty or uh, how did they feel about that. And Uli was like, um, the, the feeling that we don't talk about a lot is the uh, same. I think we should also mention about the history and that it has a lot of gaps, especially the way that it is educated in schools. And that if you are not interested in learning, I think you will stay in the shadow forever. We are uh, have been separating our um, poster in the Greek and German side. Yeah, in general, like uh, family narrative of uh, our, both our German families was more like stressing to be suffering from the war and to say like, okay, never again, but in the sense like, hopefully it will never happen to you again, like not yeah, and reasons of responsibility. We, we as Germans uh, did it and we have to take responsibility. It's more like uh, the war happens to all of us and it just happened to us. And uh, this is one um, difference from school where they, you come, let's say, to the next step to be responsible. As for the school, uh, we uh, mentioned that um, uh, in school uh, in Greece, uh, in my opinion, I have the impression that uh, we focus uh, very much in the past and we don't look further in the future so as to create a safe place and um, a peaceful uh, place for all the, uh, the European countries to come together and uh, leave back uh, the conflicts. Of course, we have to remember, of course, we have to, uh, because the wounds are still open for some people and we have to respect their point of view. But uh, in schools we have, uh, I think the next generation should focus more on, in the future. My school was a lot of like, 
this is how it was affected in Germany and this is how it worked within Germany. It was not all about um, what consequences um, our actions during the war had. What else? Uh, we came to the point, um, what was also discussed in the, mo discussed in the movie yesterday, um, that a lot of people mm -hmm. don't want specifically like money or um, reparations because the harm is done. Mm -hmm. And then we discussed a little bit about what we think could be done. And I think what we agreed on was like that an action of apology from Germany would be like with something symbolic attached to it and would be maybe more meaningful within the future also um, than just being like coming here like um, the president that came here and was like, ah, sorry, but I can't do anything. Sorry, bye. Um, so we've got like um, replacing the monument in Mittenweid, the one that was um, erected for the uh, Edelweiss um, regard. So to either tear that down and put one in remembrance of um, the Greek people or mm -hmm. in remembrance of what was done um, or to have um, a exhibition exhibition in like in a museum to remember it and to like specifically put the finger on what we did along with like a very televised public apology to like show remorse in some way <laughs> each of us we discussed our story so the first story is, is your story so uh, yes I, I would just sum it up uh, so my family was at that time in turkey so the whole family and um, turkey wasn't really involved in the second world war and therefore my family doesn't really have a memory on the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my family was pretty involved in the Second World War, I would say. Um, my grand great-grandfather was actually in the Wehrmacht, in the German army. My other great-grandfather was in the US army at the time. And my other great-grandfather fought in the Russian army. So, okay. yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a really complicated family story and mm -hmm. I don't want to uh, get into the details, but... Um, Have they ever met with each other? And no, never. <laughs> maybe, maybe in war, I don't know. <laughs> the first thing that came to my uh, attention in our discussion was that uh, in, in the majority of the family, um, in the majority of the families, it, it did the topic of the Second World War didn't really get discussed that much. In my family, actually, it's more uh, it's tragic. Uh, my mother is from Crete, from Western Crete, and her uh, her family lost five people because they burned and killed all the men in the village. It's called Col uh, Kodomari. Okay. And the Germans also took their house and lived there. <laughs> yeah. So they are very affected and they have complicated feelings. Okay. The most common command we're gonna share for today is the command stop. When your guide says stop, that means whatever you do, you stop it and paddle on your knees like that. We want to pass. No, not like that. No. <laughs> Go! Don't look down! Don't look down! Allez! Yeah! Go! 
Go! Hey. <laughs> Two, three. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go! Pame de Trajari! Bravo, Rekukla, bravo! Tommy oh. Asti! Pame! Rita! Era de Dakatsume, about techniques of uh, uh, working One. like the tradition in the traditional way to preserve this uh, type of architecture. Come on guys, we're losing it! Faster, faster! Hey. <laughs> How's the team today? He's the filmmaker. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to write some spirits. We will work by our own and in a group. Um, we will uh, give you a paper, what you have written, uh, so that we provide compact uh, information as far as we know uh, on um, on the memory of memory policies and memory cultures in Greece <laughs> and Germany I was kind of surprised to learn that um, Germany had so many troubles with memorizing holocaust and uh, atrocities mm. Because I, I grew up uh, in the in the post change society, where commemoration of the atrocities was has already taken place, and it, for me it's hard to to imagine. Nowadays, a lot of people uh, thinking about uh, the, the German nation, but still, uh, the older people thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask, uh, like, um, you, what did you expect from, from us here in Greece? When you came here, what did you expect? I never really can imagine that I heard anything about uh, Germans in Greece uh, in school or anything. I think a lot of you guys. Yes. I didn't expect that. <laughs> what we learn is more like, um, yeah, we were there, and we deportated uh, Jews from there. Atrocity is committed like Lingiades, for mm -hmm. example. There's, some of them are known um, for, the, for the Italian case, uh, the French case, but it, it seems to me that only countries who are of a higher political importance to Germany mm -hmm were able to lobby for for memorialization of these atrocities. And Greece, in so for Germany or for Western Germany, was not significant was not, enough yes, politically yes. to yes, be yes. able to lobby uh, for a change of, of memory. I can understand. I'm really glad about this film, Tobacconi, because this is the first time you get one example yeah. of how it really was and what it meant. And all the questions that arose from that have not been put. Never ever in Germany. Yeah. And my family, and you know, my. The story yeah. of uh, only one village. Yeah. And you've got thousands of villages. Village. We've, like, if we killed like 
like in Ukraine and in, in Russia and, and everywhere, like they could have hundreds of these. Mm. Now, individually, how do you feel about this war? You feel your families or uh, your nation as Germans, uh, like you are victims of this war of Nazis? How do you feel about it? As uh, individually, yes, yeah. yes. no, we're not victims. No, um, I think German society, it's not so so easy to describe. So they were both uh, perpetrators mm -hmm. and victims, and perhaps yes. even at the same time. Yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. For yeah. example... I'm just asking for yeah. your opinion. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But us as the new generation, we're not victims. In my family, um, especially like my grandma or something, mm -hmm. uh, she... she um, really feels like a victim of mm -hmm. war because I uh, also <laughs> probably she was but it's yeah it's many there are many individual like victim histories in which sense in which context could you be like more like for her yeah like um for her um she grew up in a village in east germany and um then um so she taught me then soviet army came and uh they were uh, Sh uh, sh shooting her dad in front yeah. of her and that's why she personally feels yeah, yeah. Uh, much like victim i think it's she wasn't a part of it but she was a victim yeah yeah but um like when when i talk about with with her about the war and such things um she also or when she's reading in in any, anything about it, she's often sh said like, oh, can that have an, an end now? Mm. We talked so much about it, it's decades uh, mm. ago. Also, of both of them, uh, one grandmother lost a brother, or apparently, no mm. one knows, he went to war, or was probably mm. conscripted, went to war and no one knows what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, and of course, she didn't have the, the, the possibility to, to grieve for him because up to this day, she didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, my other grandmother uh, uh, was suffering of, of hunger and um, her house was bombed down and, and so on and so forth. So, of course, there were victims of it because when the war started, there were children. They, yeah. It wasn't their guilt, you could say. They weren't guilty of the war. But at the same time, my grandfather, he volunteered to fight. Mm -hmm. okay. And he, I would uh, call him... Uh, uh, a perpetrator of the war. I don't know what he did, he never talked about it, but I would still assume he was a perpetrator because he was part of the machinery. He volunteered uh, to go to war. So I think German society as a whole, they can be both, mm -hmm. both victims of the war, both uh, uh, perpetrators, but in, in general, the guild outweighs uh, the victim. Yeah, on, on an individual side. Yeah, on the yeah, victims. victims. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But on a That's collective side, on the collective uh, dimension, the guilt overweighs. Um... But um, now I think I would like to ask Germans, how do they see today like the AfD, AfD in Germany? What What is the question about? Uh, about the AfD in Germany. How do you perceive AfD in Germany? Like They're fascists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very simple. They're Nazis. Yeah. These right-wing um, uh, parties here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do they say about um, uh, the, the, yeah, about dealing with the Germans or, or okay. what, what is their opinion? What's their opinion how to deal with uh, like Germans today or Germany? They are like uh, followers of Hitler. They believe in the white nation. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're like... Uh, so, mm -hmm. so basically the... the, the Predecessors of uh, not the predecessors, the successors of uh, the collaborators, I suppose, basically, yeah? Ideolo ideology wise. Yeah, maybe. But like, uh, they, uh, bad, bad, bad. They, they share like uh, the ideology of Nazi ideology, of course. Okay. It is, uh, this is very clear. But uh, in terms of memory, they don't have something about that because they, they cancel the whole like system. Yeah. So they don't speak about like, that like because they cancel from the very beginning, from each origin. We said that uh, in the educational system, it isn't really mentioned uh, many things mm -hmm. in Germany and uh, in Greece. Um, 
like uh, the civil war in Greece educational system is not really touched because the official narrative is not uh, fixed yet. Um, even the government itself doesn't know what to say. Are the communists uh, liber liberators? Uh, did they resist or were they like uh, pawns of the Soviet Union? We actually discussed that when we are talking about World War II, it's only about the Holocaust and not in a more a full... Uh, let, let me think of how to say that. Uh, we are, uh, you know, this is the center and we are forgetting what happened in, in other villages, in other countries and to other people too. It's not only the Jews. One last thing that I wanted to add that what uh, surprised me is that first the, the GDR made visits to martyric villages in Greece and then the West part uh, followed. Yeah. This really uh, interested me. It was interesting that the, the German embassy, for the West German embassy in Athens, um, said to German tourists, don't go to the martyric villages. So the, you, you might be... You might be... Uh, Lynched. Lynched. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. We have the thing that Germany claims themselves of champion, world champion of remembrance and um, only pushes their problems on specific groups of the population and like... Uh, if Seehofer says migration is the problem, uh, is the mother of all problems, and talking about imported anti-Semitism in Germany and so on, and therefore I wouldn't say that this family narratives always um, uh, Are in line. contradict the official right. narrative. A lot of the aspects that we've discussed uh, were already mentioned. Of course, there were victims, German victims of. Uh, the Nazi time, but uh, what is important is to not have an exclusive memory of, of the Nazi period of the war uh, and acknowledge that on a collective level, the German people were perpetrators and as such are guilty and responsible. So our generation who doesn't carry any guilt anymore is least responsible. What we've discussed is that education is very, very important. Uh, like maybe as the same what was in the film, because it shouldn't have been repeated. So discussions shouldn't stop. And in this case, we see that they've just started. So, so <laughs> like, of course they shouldn't stop. So maybe education can be uh, at least in non-formal way when uh, the um, official government doesn't provide it. Yeah. In a way, that's what we are doing here. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Hopefully, it's so what I learned from here. a lot from, from from some of you, so there are so we simple facts not known. At no point in history, the Germans were really interested into a common memory culture. They did something to provide or to to be sure that Greece still remains in the European Union. So it was at the height of the of the euro crisis of the debt crisis in Greece. And so they think we have to do something with the, about that, and we won't accept reparations, but we will do something about which is dealing with the history. Because in the, at that time, Chancellor Merkel and Finance Minister Scholz were shown in in in, in Nazi uniforms. Uh, in Greek uh, Greek uh, newsletters, particularly yes, left yes. newsletters. Uh, so in, uh, I think so. Th that is we have. Yeah, th that is what we have to change. And in the afternoon, uh, Anna Maria's <laughs> idea. We would like you to develop ideas. What would be properly projects? In this way, in this, in this uh, sense of the developing Greek-German memory culture. The goal is that you have to promote the Greek and German reconciliation and you can do that but by creating an app, by deciding to put a festival, by whatever idea you have in your mind. The digital solution for interactive and contemporary memory culture is called Monumaps. More or less, we gather some monuments, like the one we saw in Lykiades, for example. And there are two maps, Greece and Germany. And there is a, an app uh, who you can 
stuff here, for example, Ioannina, and you can see the monuments uh, about World War II and Germany and Greece. And maybe uh, could be a link that uh, uh, sends you to another monument related in Germany. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. We came up with the idea of a festival. Its name is the Live Stream Festival. Every time we say <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's the Live Stream Festival. <laughs> which, is all, which is all about the interaction uh, between uh, people from Greece and Germany. We wanted to create a new network of friendship uh, all around uh, the Europe and, and, and especially between these two countries. We thought of not to do it in the capitals of the country, but maybe in cities like Ioannina or city, um, places close to victim villages, yeah. for example, yeah. in Greece not only to be more aware of history, but also uh, to promote more of its places itself, to open them for tourism, for example. There are discussions on forums, so everyone, everybody can tell his opinion about topics and movie screenings, music concerts from Greece and Germany, podcast recording, Workshop. You want to continue? Uh, uh, we wanted to invite uh, some special people, maybe victims, victims or descendants of victims, or even historians or uh, sociologists, uh, psychiatrists, uh, people, uh, to give us uh, their input. And uh, of course, uh, there will be some tasting of traditional cuisine from each side and the, the live stream uh, we will try for the uh, festival to be live streamed so anyone can uh, watch it from home the, the idea behind all this is creating a common memory not just uh, concerning the past but also in sense of how to look into the future yeah. and of course plenty of beer yeah. <laughs> we wanted to create um, some sort of organization or platform um, for people to be able to get informed about what happened um, between Germany and Greece. Our idea is an Instagram account. The account will be called the German Greek Youth Dialogue. There's a memory bus, uh, as it is drawn now, yeah. Um, you have a title somehow, Joe. Yeah. Uh, this is our title. <laughs> there are two buses, at least. So one in Germany, one in Greece, and they're touring the country. And um, for example, they visit schools or they engage uh, with adult education in city centers. <laughs> and it could would also allow connectivity beyond the buses. Um, but to kick off the project and to supplement it uh, at various stops and events, uh, it's a personal contact, like exchange program. And the buses could function as a as a hub, as a meeting point for all these uh, these exchanges and these interpersonal con uh, contacts to happen. Plus, we'd also like uh, there's these stumbling stones uh, in Germany and also in Greece. Uh, I've learned, and um, they could be connected to our app, could provide additional information and material. Um, like we can QR code. Yeah, with the QR code. Scan and can you get more information. First runner up and first place together our memory bus and live stream festival, both with nine votes. Oh. I'm Theodor, I'm the president of the Gastronomy Club of Epirus, and this is a traditional outdoors oven called Gastra, meaning belly, because it's like a belly. This is an oven, an oven that is only the, this metal lid. What happens? We put a fire behind, in the base, let's say, and we let, or oh, we don't have fire, okay. <laughs> and we, we let this metal cover to get real hot. Despite uh, uh, the lack of uh, wealthy and uh, of plenty of materials, the people back at these days created a very tasty cuisine. A cuisine that is very well known in all the world now. 
And if you try to cook this cuisine using the traditional utensils you see there, then uh, the food itself takes more uh, taste, uh, taste, more taste. <laughs> How to realize more new maps, bamboo bus festival that takes money, it needs money to realize. And where does this money come from? Preparation payments could be a solution. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way to introduce this topic. It's highly contested and you have to decide how could we be how we could overcome this unpleasant situation between Germany and Greece? Consider yourself as lawmakers in the European Parliament. We have prepared a, a short paper. It's a short paper. It takes 10 minutes to read. Uh, and there are list and listed some arguments and you will find further arguments, pro and con. First, to start with, Germany could delete the loan that it still uh, owes to Greece Greece with an equivalent amount, which is seven, seven billion. billion, which is seven billion euros. So, and um, kind of to not to talk about reparations, but of a future um, of a common future fund, mm -hmm. which is like good for Germany and Greece, and uh, creating an association with the German and Greek people, um, partly from victim villages, from representatives, so that it's balanced um, for everyone to take part in the, to decide what would happen with this money. This association can decide on uh, projects, on rebuildings, which is like in common interest of Greece and Germany. For example, to um, cooperate with victim villages, if they would like to build new buildings, if uh, a family is very affected by um, renewing a house to give some money back. Um, also for youth, um, for youth groups to apply for projects, for exchanges, also to um, deal with the destroyed infrastructure, um, to build or to work on uh, monuments and museums and um, other remembrance work. And also to make as a topic the, um, the, miss the missing artifacts in Greece that uh, went to Germany to do some research where they could be. Our opinion is that even though time has passed, uh, it is very important that uh, we must remember, keep the memory alive, not forget and not repeat. And in that spirit, we are pro-reparation but with a twist. We argue that uh, maybe it's better Germany give money directly like, to the communities, like to the local community, as we were like before in uh, the previous day to Ligades, directly like to the, to, the, to the villas of Ligades and to do like foundation, like uh, to rebuild the whole area and to and then schools from Germany visit uh, Ligades and see what happened accordingly, also to Hortiatis and other Calabrit and other villages according to that schedule. And uh, the area could also be developed apart from, like, from, from the memory, but also as a tourist destination from the civil um, society of, of Germany, like to see what happened like in, uh, uh, in that period. It's really different watching the documentary in a class somewhere or uh, in a, 
uh, in a museum or and different in watching it uh, really uh, to the place where it happened, talking to people um, and uh, connecting in that way. So we get to know each other and get past um, preoccupation that it's really here and we cannot ignore that. Uh, we didn't actually spend any time of like uh, arguing if there should be reparations or not. I think we all agreed straight away that there should be reparations. Mm -hmm. So we thought we maybe come up with a social justice pattern. Um, so for example, maybe like we, uh, there should be like probably funded by one of these funds, like a, a, a campaign that uh, maybe the, the, the people in the supermarkets can, for example, uh, decide if they pay for the normal feta or they pay a more expensive feta, mm -hmm. where there's information about what happened in Liadis and this money goes directly to, uh, to, to a reparation fund. The instant feeling we all had was disappointment and maybe helplessness because we think that we, we were like uh, whatever motion we think of, it will not resonate to uh, the governments of the, of the countries. For us, uh, the argument of reparations uh, should not even be doubted. The loss of infrastructure, agriculture, and the economical crisis after the, the Second World War uh, had a huge impact in the financial state of the country that we still suffer today. And um, the first thing we would like to propose is uh, the recognition of this uh, suffering. The second thing we would like to point out is that uh, uh, Germany should recognize that this is a law obligation and not a humanitarian action, because by not recognizing, they don't allow the countries to claim uh, reparations in, uh, in a legal way and uh, they just find a loophole in the diplomatic roads, the reparations to go to the victims and the people that suffer, and not based on their political, let's say, policy. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, and I found out actually in this project, and uh, it was shocking for me, is that the soldiers of the Edelweiss were not uh, convicted. And this is another big disappointment. From what I saw from all the suggestions, they they all they all can book with would all be put all together in one. Actually, I don't think there is one better than the other. Yeah. We have the campaigning, we have the foundation, we have the where it should go, and we have uh, the pure reparation, the paying of the of the of the loan. So you have actually like yeah. a complete proposal where you have all the steps um, together and work at one uh, proposal. We will give you a piece of paper and everybody should write down, it was be anonymous, uh, everything he wants us to know. How long is it? Um, it's um, okay. 700 kilometers. Thank you for your hospitality. I really liked it. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 